Hello, and welcome to December 2023 CTR Coding Break. My name is Kelsey Freya Perkins, Quality Manager for Registry Partners. Today, I will be discussing ambiguous terminology and cytology nuances. The varying use of ambiguous terminology in a medical record can be a challenge while determining a diagnosis. The SEER and STORE manuals provide detailed guidelines of the best way to navigate these situations. The objectives for this presentation are to learn how to use ambiguous terms and where to find them, an update for reporting cytology that contains ambiguous terminology, understanding the nuances of cytologic procedures and how to code them, as well as reviewing some coding examples. Where does ambiguous terminology come from and how do we use it? Ambiguous terminology can appear anywhere in the medical record. This could be on imaging, physician statements, or pathology and cytology reports. When ambiguous terms are used, it's important to follow the reportability instructions and lists provided in both the SEER and STORE manuals. Additionally, even if a term is listed in the manual, it's only reportable when used with the word synonymous to a reportable disease, such as cancer, carcinoma, sarcoma, malignant neoplasm, etc. The ambiguous terms would not be reportable if followed by a non-reportable process, such as neoplasm, tumor, mass, nodule. If there's a discrepancy in the medical record with both reportable and non-reportable terms, assess in the case based on the reportable ambiguous terminology. Ambiguous term lists are available in both the SEER program and staging manual, as well as the STORE manual. SEER has a bit more of a comprehensive section on ambiguous terminology and details some equivalent terms and examples that can be used in certain situations. For example, per the SEER manual, malignant until proven otherwise may be used as long as there is no information to the contrary. Ideally, a patient would go on to have further workup to confirm the malignancy. STORE has an additional table with some common terminology that is not reportable, such as the terms possible and worrisome. The use of ambiguous terms on cytology can be a little nuanced. Seer and Store instruct us not to assess in a case based only on suspicious cytology or any cytology using ambiguous terminology. Further information or confirmation is needed to make this a reportable case. When a reportable diagnosis is later confirmed by subsequent biopsy, excision, or other means, assess in the case. When this situation occurs, the date of diagnosis is the date of a suspicious or ambiguous cytology. This is a change from the previous rules for 2021 and prior, and this change applies to cases diagnosed 1-1-2022 and forward. Let's go through a coding example. A 64-year-old female presents to the facility for a U.S.-guided thyroid FNA due to a mass discovered on imaging. On 3-1-2023, a right thyroid nodule FNA was performed. The cytology report read, suspicious for papillary thyroid cancer. On 4-14-2023, a total thyroidectomy was performed and the pathology report read, unifocal right thyroid tumor positive for papillary thyroid cancer, classical type. What is the date of diagnosis? Is it A, 3-1-2023, the date of suspicious cytology, or B, 4-14-2023, the date the cancer was histologically confirmed? The answer is A, 3-1-2023. Per SEER and STORE, code the date of diagnosis to the date of the suspicious cytology when it is later confirmed. What are cytologic procedures? Per SEER, cytology refers to the microscopic examination of cells in the body fluids obtained from aspirations, washings, scrapings, and smears. These can be collected as a fine needle aspiration or FNA, peripheral blood smear, dercentesis, brushings, and or washings from a bronchoscopy or urine cytology. A fine needle aspiration of a lymph node is also considered cytology. Once you've determined the case is reportable and the date of diagnosis, how do we record these procedures performed by cytology? It's easy for us to go along with our case and record a cytologic procedure as a diagnostic biopsy. However, STORE has specified that these are not surgical and therefore they are not recorded as a surgical diagnostic and staging procedure. Instead, most of these are only captured in the diagnostic confirmation field. The exception being a fine needle aspiration of a lymph node, which is also captured in the scope of regional lymph node field. That brings us to coding example two. A 52-year-old African-American male presents to the ED complaining of abdominal pain and jaundice. 
The 2 1 2023 CT abdomen and pelvis shows a 5.6 centimeter mass like lesion at the head of the pancreas. Neoplasm suspected. 2 3 2023 upper endoscopic ultrasound with an FNA of the pancreatic head mass is performed. Cytology is positive for a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. Further workup with a PET on 2-10-2023 shows the mass invades the superior mesenteric artery and metastatic disease. The Medonc and surgeons state the pancreatic adenocarcinoma is stage 4, unresectable, and the surgery is not performed. What is the date of diagnosis in this case? This would be 2-3-2023. Although suspected is a reportable ambiguous term on the 2-1-2023 CT, it's preceded by neoplasm, which is only reportable for benign and borderline CNS. For the ambiguous term section, this is not yet reportable. The cytology on 2-3-2023 does not use ambiguous terms and is positive for poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. What is the diagnostic confirmation? This would be two cytologic confirmation. The diagnosis was confirmed by cytology from the fine needle aspiration. And finally, what is recorded in the surgical diagnostic and staging procedure field? This would be zero, zero or blank. The diagnostic procedure was done by a cell aspiration and is not considered a surgical procedure. Per story, this is not coded. Now let's take a look at that same example again, but let's say the cytology was suspicious. On 2-3-2023, the upper EOS with FNA of the pancreatic head mass was performed. This cytology is suspicious for a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. Further workup with a PET on 2-10-2023 shows the mass invades the SMA and metastatic disease. The tumor is unresectable and surgery is not performed. What is the date of diagnosis in this case? 2-3-2023. The diagnosis date remains the same. Although cytology is initially suspicious, the diagnosis is later confirmed by the PET and the physicians. Per the updated coding rules, when a reportable diagnosis is made by suspicious cytology and later confirmed by other means, the date of diagnosis is the date of the initial cytology. The diagnostic confirmation and the surgical diagnostic and staging procedure also remains the same. This brings us to our final coding examples. A 90-year-old white female presents to the ED complaining of shortness of breath and an elevated white blood cell count is noted. A peripheral blood smear is ordered. 329-2023 peripheral blood smear, chronic leukemia, CLL. Flow cytometry reveals co-expression of CD5, CD19, CD20, and CD23. The combined morphologic and aminophenotypic findings are compatible with CLL. What is the date of diagnosis? So would be 329-2023. The peripheral blood smear is positive for CLO. What is the diagnostic confirmation? This would be three, positive histology plus positive immunophenotyping. Per the human lymph manual, positive histology includes a peripheral blood smear for human lymph cases. The diagnosis was confirmed by the smear and the positive immunophenotyping on flow cytometry. What is recorded in the surgical diagnostic and staging procedure field? This would be zero, zero or blank. The diagnostic procedure was done by peripheral blood smear and is not considered a surgical procedure. Per store, this would not be coded. I hope this review of ambiguous terminology, cytology, and the coding examples we discussed was helpful to you. Thank you for joining.